Hi everyone, uh, thank you for coming. Uh, my name is Lauren Carbajal, L-A-U-R-E-N-C-A-R-B-A-J-A-L. Uh, I am an attorney at Lovey & Lovey, a national civil rights firm. And today I'm here with Mr. Willie Williams, who we represent. Mr. Williams is quite possibly the um, person who has been wrongfully convicted uh, and wrongfully incarcerated for the longest time that we know of in Florida. He lost 45 years of his life behind bars for crimes that he did not commit. As the, and today we're announcing the filing of a lawsuit against the city of Jacksonville, Duval County, and members of the Jacksonville Sheriff's Department for their role in wrongfully convicting Willie. Uh, as we allege in the complaint, members of the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office worked together to frame Willie for crimes he did not commit. Um, as you'll see in the complaint, we allege that these officers hypnotized one of the key witnesses in Willie's case into identifying Willie as the perpetrator of the crimes. They did this despite the fact that there was clear evidence that there another man had committed these crimes and was responsible. But because that man committed suicide shortly after the crimes happened, they decided to paint Willie as the shooter and caused his 45 year long imprisonment. There has never been any physical evidence to tie Willie to these crimes. And instead he had to suffer in prison for almost half his life, nearly half a century for these crimes of which he was innocent. Um, Willie's gonna talk a little bit more about his time in prison and how his life has been infected, uh, how his life has been affected by the serious miscarriage of justice. Um, and then after that, our co-counsel from the Human Rights De uh, Defense Center, Mr. Paul Wright, will give a few closing remarks. Um, and then we'll have a little bit of time for questions after. Uh, I'm gonna turn the mic over to Willie. Good evening, my name is Willie Williams and I'm very elated to be here and I appreciate uh, you all coming uh, for this interview. It's a lot that I could say but most of what I want to say is that they talk about the time that I spent in prison, the 45 years I spent in prison. Uh, while in prison, I was in maximum security. I lost a lot of family members, including my mom, several aunts, uh, uncles, father, wife, nieces, nephews, and a bunch of friends. And while in prison, I suffered a lot of mental anguish a lot of hardship from the environment that I was in because the environment I was in, it was the prison that was the most crucial of all the prisons in the state of Florida. I stayed there in the system for 45 years and today I'm elated from being free from that environment and I appreciate everyone that's involved that's trying to help me uh, overcome those anguish that I have and I still have some of them within myself because I'm, st I'm a progress in, in making right now. I still have some issues that I deal with from the prison system back there. Sometimes I have sleepless nights thinking about you know some of the things that I have seen that happen in prison from sexual abuse to murders and things of this nature and I had to en endure that environment and in order for me to and do that environment, I had to focus on myself. But most of all, what helped me most of all was my mother. She made sure that my sisters would come and visit me every weekend. And that gave me a sense of relief, at least for that time that they come and visit me. My brother got uh, killed in Vietnam I wasn't allowed to come to his funeral either. So there's a lot of things that, that that's still hurting inside of me, but I hold no malice or no grief uh, against anyone in particular. I'm just happy and glad and proud to be what of good health and sane mind and trying to move on with my life. When I was sentenced to a life sentence and three 30 year sentences, and I was on the bus going to the uh, prison and I was leaving Jacksonville and I looked out the window and I looked back and I said to myself, well, Jacksonville, I would never ever see you again. But what I didn't know, God had a better plan. And that plan 
brought me here today. I'm Paul Wright from the Human Rights Defense Center. I'm the executive director. And with Lovey and Lovey, we represent Mr. Williams. And one of the things as a native Floridian, I think one of the things that's really critical here is the fact that on the one hand, the state's attorney's office, their integrity review unit did the right thing by recognizing the injustice that happened to Mr. Williams and ensuring he was freed from his uh, wrongful conviction. And now I think the time is to call on uh, the folks of the city government of Jacksonville to right this wrong and ensure that um, Mr. Williams receives the compensation he's entitled to. He's had 45 years of his life, I mean, almost half a century stolen from him, and he certainly owed a chance uh, to try and get some of that back as best he can. And I think it's also one of the things, too, is worth noting is that Florida also leads the nation in wrongful convictions in terms of exonerations and people being released uh, from their sentences. So there's obviously systemic problems that need to be resolved. Thank you very much. Uh, we're happy to take a few questions for a little bit if you have any. So what exactly are you seeking in this lawsuit in terms of monetary damages? Sure, yes. Uh, so we are seeking monetary damages, as you said. Um, ultimately, that number is going to be up to a jury made up of citizens of the city of Jacksonville. Um, and we're hoping that the jury can really take us take some time to think about how much 45 years of their life is going to be worth when they're deciding how much to award Willie. Um, Lovey and Lovey has a long history of fighting and winning these wrongful conviction suits, so if you're curious about past uh, judgments that we've won, happy to uh, point you to our website and you can see some of our past victories. Um, not quite yet. So we filed uh, about midnight uh, last night um, and we'll be working with the rest of the process to serve everyone. But um, so we have not received any kind of response yet. Um, again, like as uh, my co-counsel Paul said, uh, we're really grateful to the state's attorney's office and that conviction integrity unit because when uh, Mr. Williams was asking to be released on the account of this concealed evidence, um, the state's attorney stepped in and joined that petition to make sure that his uh, conviction was vacated. So, uh, so far that response has been great and we hope that it's an indicative of other responses as the lawsuit continues. Ma'am? What is your hope by filing this lawsuit? I didn't hear what you said. What is your hope by filing this lawsuit? When I would love this? Yeah, what do you hope for from this lawsuit? From this lawsuit? Yeah. Uh, Money will never replace the time and the anguish and the emotional things that I went through, you know. But it will uh, give me some comfort with my family and my wife to try to live the rest of our life. I'm 79 years old. My wife is 75 years old, so we're up there in age. And whatever reward that comes from it, you know, it will be used uh, for us to try to have a comfortable life. When you first go in the prison system, they have a what you call uh, a probationary period. And everybody goes into the prison, they be put on what you call the chain gang. You be shackled, you go outside with the shotgun men on both corners, and you be down in the hole uh, swinging glass with snakes, and sometimes they have to shoot the snakes and things. You know, uh, right now, it, I feel very, very elite not to have those shackles on. Uh, I still have uh, some issues with my legs and my knees from, from the shackles and stuff because they used to be very, very heavy at that particular time. While I was in prison also, I worked in the infirmary and uh, not having the proper equipment to deal with guys that were in the infirmary with blood and stuff like that, and I called hepatitis C. And the Department of Correction over a period of time, they finally start giving us medication to relieve ourselves of uh, hepatitis C. Uh, also, uh, I developed kidney stones in there because they were feeding us food that was uh, really not nutritional for us. And I had to come from Rayford 
Florida, all the way to Jacksonville, to have these uh, kidney stones removed. You know, and that was a tormented thing because you know you can't use the bathroom; they're not going to stop, and you got to go to the bathroom and stuff. You know, because you don't drunk this stuff in the morning, you know, to, to clean you out, and you're driving from Rapid all the way to Jacksonville. That was a long drive, you know, and it was, it was just a rough time, a real rough time. I, I, I did, at, at one time in point in life, I had really had gave up, you know, and then after I got off the, the chain gang and stuff, uh, went to classification and thing, and then I got a job working in the law library. And, and at that point, I started filing motions in court and stuff, man, and it started looking good. I came back to Jacksonville three times uh, to the courts, you know, on motions that I had filed. And of course, they were denied. But this time when I got out, uh, the innocent, uh, the uh, uh, integrity unit, Ms. Melissa Nelson, you know, uh, I wrote her, she sent me a form to fill out, and I said, and they started investigating my case. And a lot of things that I didn't even know, especially about this hypnosis and all this kind of stuff, I've known that in the past, and I would have put that in some of my motions, but I didn't know. And she called me over her office over there one day, and she explained to me, and she said, you know, say, you got a good case here, man. You know, say, but we can't defend you because we're the state attorney. We're going to turn it over to the Innocent Project. The Innocent Project took it from there, and here I am. Uh, this particular witness, he, he never could identify me because the, uh, the actual shooter of the crime uh, was committed suicide uh, or had shot him and his lady three times, and neither one of them could identify who I was, you know, or who the w person was. That, uh, so what they did was uh, that they, they brought him down there and they put him up on the hypnosis and showed him pictures. Which, which opened his mind to it. And so when he seen me in the lineup, he said, yeah, that's him. And then when he's in the courtroom, then he said, yeah, that's him, based upon the hypnosis that he was on, under to identify me, you know, which also was in violation of the Brady Law, where uh, that they didn't disclose this information to my lawyer at that time. If they disclosed this information to my lawyer at this time, then he'd have had a, a, a better reason to argue the case. Yeah. Frame, how disheartening is it to know that detectives might take those lengths to frame an innocent person like yourself? Well, I, I, you know, I, I, I don't hold any uh, ill feelings towards them because I feel that they were just doing their job, you know, although they were going outside the scope to do their job, but they felt what they were doing was right, I guess, you know, and they wanted to get a conviction for whatever reason there may be, you know, and I respect that. It was still a clear civil rights violation, we want to yeah. say as well. Um, suppressing and destroying evidence um, has long been established by the Constitution and other case law across the United, Nation, uh, United States um, that that is in violation of people's civil rights. And Willie is very deserving of a reward to try and compensate for those rights that were violated by him. Um, so we just filed, civil cases are notoriously kind of slow, but we plan on being very aggressive about um, the, litigating the rest of the case. Uh, we want to make sure that we can get some justice for Willie as soon as possible, as swiftly as he was convicted. The investigation really only took place over the course of about a month in, in their efforts to frame Willie and make sure that he was convicted, and we, we want to make it as quick as possible to get him um, reparations for all those years that he lost. Any more questions? Oh, this is my family. This is this is my wife, <laughs> Amina. This is my sister, which my mother mandated her to always come and bring the rest of the family to visit me. And after she passed, she was charged with that, and she never failed. She always there on the spot every weekend. To see I appreciate it and I love it to death. This is Sister Brother-in-law here, and I love him to death. You know, uh, we go back you know, some years and things, and I appreciate him coming down to support.
This is my favorite cousin. <laughs> you know, she also didn't miss a weekend to come visit me all the time. And whatever I needed, I needed a package for some shoes or some clothes or whatever. She made sure, along with the family, that I received those packages in church. So it made myself a little bit more comfortable while I was in church. And I love her to death, and nothing in the world I wouldn't do that. This is my favorite nephew, <laughs> her son, you know, and I love him to death. It means, a, it means a lot because a lot of guys in prison didn't have family support. You know, either their family passed away or they did things uh, contrary to what their family wanted them to do. And so they were just there by themselves, you know. And, but it means a whole lot for me to have my family behind me. It meant, a, I mean, I can't express how much it meant for me to have my family there. You know, I can look, when, they, when the people get on the loudspeaker and say, uh, Willie Williams, you got to visit, you know. I'm going to the visiting park, you know, because I know my family going to be there. A lot of guys didn't have that opportunity because they didn't have family to, to stand by them. Okay, thank you so much, everyone, if that's all the questions. Um, I think our contact information is in the press releases that was sent to you by our communications team where everybody there um, and th that gave their information is happy to take any more questions if you have them. I got a business card too if you need that for a little thing. Do you have a business card? I don't. Okay. Good. <laughs> Good job, Willie. You did a great job. Thank you. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you so much. We thank everybody and appreciate y'all coming. Thank you. Down to this interview. And y'all have a great afternoon. Yeah, I please have a great afternoon. <laughs> I know. I normally do, but today, like, I, know, I think I just uh, recently came out with a backpack, and I was like, oh, no, that's, that's the one yeah. <laughs> the stash I normally have as well. Don't forget your backpack. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> 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 good. Oh, that's good. You got a whole thing. You got a bunch of food. You don't have to get any more pictures. Yeah, I was. No, you got a bunch of food. Oh, you got some business cards. All these together? Oh, because that's all Yeah.